Remember when Phil Schiller said this? Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> Let's talk about that innovative machine. Greg Rake, and welcome to episode two of season four of my Mac Pro series. Today we will be talking about my 6.1 2013 Mac Pro, aka the trash can, and talk about just how innovative it was. And honestly, fuel wasn't lying. It is a very innovative machine in ways, but it also kind of reminds you of other things this upside down G4 cube. Add right. this. Innovative. <laughs> but yeah, they are actually, it, it was an innovative machine. Its design was very different. We'll go with that. This was the only Mac Pro ever made that you can pick up with one hand, which is kind of neat, but it also killed out expandability, unless you're talking about the Thunderbolt 2 ports. And this was one of the very first Macs ever announced to have Thunderbolt 2 which was the new standard at the time and the most powerful connection you could talk about. But Phil also said in that same keynote, this. Four USB 3, six Firewire 2 being driven by three Firewire 2 controllers. And you guys who use this stuff know what I'm talking about. So was it Thunderbolt 2 or was it Firewire 2? Yes, according to Phil, this was the only computer ever in the world to have Firewire 2 ports in it. Not 400 or 800, but some kind of next generation firewire port. Yeah, feel really flubbed that one. And um, I thought that was interesting, and I thought we'd play that video because uh, it was a, a big flub there. But this system actually is pretty useful today. Um, it's not as useful as it was, of course, but it still lays out a lot of power. And in today's video, we're going to be going about everything on this thing. We're going to go over every spec in it and uh, talk about different versions and which version you should actually go out and look at. And we'll also talk about the hardware. We'll show it and plug it in, show it off, show some of its neat little features that um, no other Mac ever had. Um, and you'll, you'll see those when we get there. And even though it is a very innovative design, like I said, it killed off a lot of things. And we'll be talking about that also. And um, there's a number of drawbacks with this system, but with some expansion chassis, you can still use this just like any other Mac Pro. So let's get to it. All right, so before we talk about which 2013 you should consider getting, we need to talk about the pink elephant in the room. And as Phil said, that this is a very innovative machine, but it isn't in ways also. Um, like um, the design is very elegant. You know, you've got the GPUs here and here. We've got an NVMe drive there. You know, we got all the ports on the back. We've got USB 3s, head, headphone jack, um, speaker out, two gigabit Ethernet. HDMI out, six Thunderbolt 2 ports, and, you know, the power jack. It's still got the power supply built into it. You know, it's easily accessible for upgrading the RAM, but you have to take the whole system apart to upgrade the, G uh, the CPU. And, well, some models didn't have screws on those CPU places, as far as I know. Uh, they replaced the screws with pegs or something like that, so you couldn't upgrade it. It wasn't user upgradable anymore. Uh, but I'm sure there's kits out there to fix that problem. 
But still, you have to take apart the entire system, and it's a very convoluted design. Um, lots of screws. It's amazingly painful to take apart the CPU. That's why I didn't want to do it. Um, although it's easy to upgrade the NVMe, even with a little adapter. Um, also, you know, looking at the previous model, this is actually a 4,1 GT built. In fact, I think this is the one he did the deleting on. Um, this has upgraded CPUs and stuff. But instead of going with two CPUs in this system, where we could have had a 24-core Mac Pro, they decided to go to a one CPU design. And instead of just doing one GPU in the system, they decided to go with a dual GPU design because they figured that processing with the uh, dual GPUs would be better and uh, more applications would use them in the future. They never did. And there's some more drawbacks about the GPUs we'll talk about in a minute. But we went from this, uh, from this to this. And that means we went from having the expandability of putting four drives right here for storage, all the PCI cards you want in it, um, two optical drives, two, you know, an NVMe drive. And that's, that's literally it. <laughs> you can expand the NVMe, you can upgrade the RAM, but that's about all you can do. Where this system was so easy, you just had to do this, pull the tray out, and you could access the CPUs, you could do the RAM really easy also, and it was a lot easier to upgrade. You could put newer graphics cards in it, and they would work. You know, this system right here is altogether better. But, this was the previous generation. This was actually based off the 2009 architecture. Uh, even when they were still making them in 2012, the next generation wasn't much better. Um, and this would accept the next generation with upgrades to the firmware. But they still were pretty slow and not great. This system here has a CPU based off an Ivy Bridge generation. And, of course, it's server grade. They're Xeons also. But even though they're slightly better, they have a few more instruction sets, they're a smaller process and stuff, the, the performance between these two, once this is fully upgraded, is quite comparable. And in the next video, we will be comparing speeds. Um, I don't have the fastest spec. I do have faster CPUs, but this is a 3.06 gigahertz dual six core. So 12 cores of 3.06 versus a 12 core single 12 with um, 2.7 gigahertz. So it will still be a pretty fair fight. But when we're not talking about that right now. The drawbacks of this system are numerous. But with the right expansion chassis, you can just plug everything into these ports here. The problem is expansion chassis, even today, are still extremely expensive. So, yeah, if you're going to do, for an example, an eGPU, uh, expect to pay a pretty penny for the expansion chassis. Uh, but you can still do it, even though Apple never officially supported it. You can patch it in, and it works. It's just slower than a Thunderbolt 3 or later system with eGPUs, but it will still do it. And then you can compute with a modern day GPU uh, up to Monterey. And then after that, well, we still, I'm still not sure how that's going to work out. But yeah, we lost hard drive expansion. Uh, we lost easy access for the CPU. We lost optical drives. We lost slots to plug stuff into. I mean, this is next generation, that's USB 2, but you could get a USB 3 card. That's Thunderbolt 2, they didn't have Thunderbolt, but you could get a Thunderbolt 3 card, uh, so you could actually have even more um, performance there. Uh, you know, you've got these workstation graphics cards in there that, <laughs> yeah, you could put any graphics card you wanted in this. And as long as the operating system supported it, it worked. 
This, you can't upgrade. You can swap them out. Okay, they will come out. You can swap them out for the D300, the D500, and the D700. This system right here has dual D700s in it. And this is where we're going to talk about the problems with this system uh, in one second. All right, so let's start talking about the problems about this system. First off, it's got one fan in it that is centrally located. It sucks air from the bottom and then blows it out the top, which is pretty nice, but it gets quite warm because it's just a big metal shell when this cover is on it. And there's not a whole lot of ventilation. These things get really hot, okay, like super hot, which is a problem for the GPUs. And here's where the big problem came, came in. Um, the D300s were kind of underpowered. The D500s were so-so, and the D700s were okay, but not great, okay? But two of them in unison were pretty special. They worked great for the software that supported it. No software ever really supported it. Plus, the D300s ran hot. The D500s ran even hotter. And the D700s are kind of like liquid lava. Uh, they run really, really, really hot. Also, you've got to consider your NVMe is floating above one of them. <laughs> it's just a stupid design in general. But because of this problem, if you're going out to look for a 2013, I'd recommend trying to find a system with D300s in it because they run the coolest. And in the modern day operating systems, uh, you're going to not see any performance improvement going between them, okay? Um, because you're not really rendering with an almost 11 year old GPU that no one ever really supported. The D series, a, uh, Fire Pros never really had a uh, support of any other OS. I mean, any other system in general. Uh, AMD was really only ma making them for Apple. Um, I believe they did make some workstation cards and stuff, but it never took off, and no one really supported the platform. And um, two of these together, um, well, one of them together, I don't know if my benchmarks work with both of them together, but um, one of them together is a lot less powerful than the Vega 56 we're plugging into the expansion chassis of. Okay, so um, yeah, you're, you're, you're just not going to have good compute power no matter which GPU you go with. But I would recommend trying to find the D300s. The problem is the D300s were only made for a few years before Apple dropped them because the base models, the D300s, you know, most people would upgrade to the, at least the 500. Well, in this case, they uh, they should have kept the D300 as an option because the D300s are the most reliable. If you're going to get a system with a 500 or 700, I'd recommend modifying the fan curve, making sure all the thermal paste is good on them, and making it blow uh, the heat out more powerful. Uh, like, so that's. That's talking about the GPUs there. Um, these were ne they ne Apple intended to sell upgrade cards, as far as I know. That never happened. So from 2013 to 2019, they were selling uh, workstation GPUs that were all the same that whole time. They got really old really fast, and they just... They never changed the design or upgraded the cards, so you're stuck with really ancient GPUs that just don't work. Um, they're fine for, you know, regular browsing the web and stuff, and they'll still support 4K and all that stuff, and do them very well. Even uh, the D300s would do that, but they are still just very antiquated, horrible GPUs that... Um, just don't give you that compute performance you need if you need to compute with them. Plus, like I keep saying, most programs never supported more than one at a time. Uh, I think Final Cut is one of the only programs that support more than one at a time. So, yeah, that's, that sucks. But anyway, so as we move along here... 
This thing came with 1066 and 1333 DDR3. This came with 1866 DDR3. Okay. So if we open this, if we why isn't it opening? There we go. If we open it, this is the RAM, which isn't coming out. This is definitely a classic Mac Pro video. That's the RAM. It's 1866. It's 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 fast-ish. I mean, it's still DDR3. You're not going to get the best performance, but it will do the job. So that's the expandable RAM. Then we have the ports I talked about. That's about it. There's not a whole lot more to talk about. But what I would recommend if you're going in the market to find one is to buy a base model because you can get them for sometimes less than $200. Try to find one with a D300 because if it's got the D300, you more than likely have CPU screws, which will make it a lot easier to upgrade your CPU, um, which is also nice. And like I said, the D300s are plenty enough for what you need. Then if you need better graphics, use the expansion port. And if you're going to do that, use this port right here. The sixth port goes straight to the CPU from what I'm told. So you'll get the best performance that way. But yeah, try to find the base models because you can get the 12 core CPU for this system really, really easily and really cheaply. And even though you will have to take the whole system apart, which is a pain, there's a lot of videos on there, uh, online, on YouTube, that will show you how to do it and do it properly. And in that case, you'll, you'll save a lot of money buying a base model. And um, Apple never uh, sold the D300s with 12 cores. Okay, with the 12 core, I think you could only get the 700. You might have been able to get the 500. I'm not really sure about that. But you can run dual D300s with a 12 core if you custom build it yourself. And that's what I thought I actually bought because I wanted the D300s because of reliability. I didn't get them. Um, I got a surprise when I got it in the mail. I thought it was a custom built. The seller upgraded the CPU and kept D300s because it said it had D300s. And I got dual D700s. Which, hey, I got an upgrade, but like I said, in a modern day OS, you're not going to see any difference and the compute power is not going to be much different at all. You definitely want to go with an eGPU if you want better GPU performance. So, yeah. Anyway, before we hook it up, I do want to talk about just how neat the case is. Now, I've only seen, seen these in the wild like once or twice back when they were still the current system and they were still extremely expensive. This particular spec was over $10,000 new. Um, yeah, I got it for just a few hundred dollars. <laughs> but it's a neat system. And like I said, I've only seen them out in the wild a handful of times. This is the first time I've actually gotten to hold one is when I bought this thing. And this, this case is just neat. I mean, it even sounds neat, but it also still looks like a trash can. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of describes what the system really is. It's kind of trashy, but still useful. So let's plug it in. So before we plug in the crazy kin monitor up there, I want to show you one of my favorite features of this system, which you can only see if you're behind it and you move the system or you just turned it on for the first time. All this is lit up in the back, so you can see it in the dark. So the saying, uh, the idea was, if you needed to plug something into it, you could just pick up the system, spin it around, and as you can see, the ports will light up. There's a gyro in it, and it detects when it's getting moved. So the lights will light up, which is kind of neat. Um, Apple should have done that to more systems because this is actually quite, quite useful. And every time you spin it around, and they turn on. And then when you turn it on, they'll light up for a brief second and then turn back off. Here's another good view of those lights. If I shake this table here, that's pretty neat. 
So here's the boot up. We've got Crazy Ken's ultra-wide LG display plugged in, which I had problems with when I first plugged this in, of the system not actually recognizing the resolution properly. Let's see if it does it this time. And I've already put open uh, core legacy patcher on it so we could do all the eGPU mods on this thing. Uh, just testing it out. We're going to be experimenting more with this soon. So. All right, and we're already at the desktop. It's that fast. This was one of the very first Macs, and then this was, I think, the first desktop that had NVMe SSD in it. So it's actually a very slow NVMe now, uh, but still pretty darn quick for, you know, its time. And you guys can't even see anything on the screen. There we go. <laughs> So, yeah, we've got this thing booted up into Monterey, which was the last official supported OS on the system. So, yeah, I'll zoom you guys in here and show you the specs. And then in the next episode, we'll be comparing the CPU performance between this system and my other uh, Mac Pro and seeing just how different they really, truly were in performance. All right, so here are the system specs here. We've got the 2.712 core, 64 gigs of DDR3, uh, the Fire Pro D700s. There's two of them, but um, it's only showing one of them in graphics. I think earlier versions would show two times, but still, they're both there. And if we go to System Report, which goes over here where you're not zoomed in, and now my mouse isn't working. There we go. Here are the specs of the system. And if we go over to graphics, there's the two Fire Pros. There's really not a whole lot else to say about them. But, um, yeah. And then if we go to Firewire, where's the Firewire 2 ports? <laughs> but, yeah. We actually do have Thunderbolt 2 in it. And there's three buses on it. So each Thunderbolt port had half a bus. You had two ports per bus, which was pretty darn neat. Um, you'd get the most bandwidth possible out of them, basically, and it always worked. And then you have the USB 3 bus here. This is actually the same chipset in it as uh, those aftermarket express cards I use in older um, MacBooks. Uh, it's the same chipset. That's why those work. And there is the USB 3, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, there's not a whole else to say here. This system is, it's quick. It boots fast. It works well, but it's still, yeah, it's still not great. So, what we're going to do in the next episode is compare this system with the other which translates to I need to put High Sierra on both of them because the other one doesn't have a metal-supported GPU, and I don't want to mess with all that crap right now. Uh, so we're just going to uh, do a supported OS for both of them. So anyway, guys, let's wrap up the video. So yeah, guys, this is my 6.1 Mac Pro 2013 model trash can. Yeah, it's an interesting system. You can feel some air coming out of it right now while it's idling on this screen here. And I'll tell you what, this screen is really hard to work around. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does what it needs to do. It works. And I mean, you can lift it. It's plugged in right now. And I could almost hold it with one finger, but I don't want to drop it because it's still kind of expensive. But yeah. Anyway, it is a little heavy, but you can still do it with one arm. So that's it's pretty neat. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode where we talked about this system and what you should probably consider doing. I'd ex recommend buying the cheaper models and upgrading the CPU. But if you're like me and you feel like it's just not worth it, you can get the 12 cores extremely cheap now. This was over $10,000 new. 
and now you can get it for less than $500. And it still has quite a punch to it. I do wish instead of Apple doing dual GPUs, they had done dual CPUs, because that would have gave this thing more horsepower. Uh, and yeah, the GPUs were a very bad, bad idea. So yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> There's no, nothing else to say about that. It was a stupid idea, and Apple shouldn't have done two GPUs, because the only thing it's doing is making more heat just to make a display, basically. Thanks, Apple. But anyway, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, don't forget, I do have a Patreon, and I also have memberships, so hit the Join button or link at the end of the video or in the description below. For Patreon, and um, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd help me out there. But other than that, that's the end of today's video, and thank you for watching. This has been a K Mods video. Oh my god, it's hard to get around this monitor. I see why I can get rid of it. Ugh. And talk about the expandability. Now, Phil said that this was a very innovative machine, a.k.a. can't innovate my ass. I think it was can't innovate any more my ass. Now, as Phil said, this was a very innovative design, a.k.a. can't innovate any more my ass. Um, it's not super innovative in many ways. No. But, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Mm. Well, getting around this display is a pain. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, this is my 3,1. This isn't a 3,1. This is 2013. So, yeah, guys, this is my 6,1 MacBook Pro. I'm starting to fall apart again. <laughs>